Number one. This happened fairly recently. I'm a late twenties male, around six foot four and about 180 pounds. I'm sometimes too nice to my friends. I tend to do favors for them, even if it's pretty ridiculous, just so long as it's not terribly out of my way. Most of the time, it's help, I'm drunk, I need a ride home. Well, one night, at around 1.30am, I get a call. A very drunk friend of mine, Claire, is begging me to come and pick her up and give her a ride home. The bar she's at is closing soon, and she's too drunk to drive. The place isn't too far from my house, about a 10 or a 15 minute drive. But the issue is that she lives about 35 to 45 minutes away on the other side of town. Claire has been extremely nice to me in the past, and I did owe her a solid. So at about 10 to 2, I grab my keys and my concealed carry and leave the house. I get to the bar around 5 minutes after 2, and she's sitting outside on a bench by the doorman. I pull into the parking lot, which is pretty empty since the bar's closed, and I'm assuming that the cars remaining were the workers who had yet to leave. I get out of the car and start walking to Claire, who's kind of slumped over. I was hoping she wasn't passed out drunk, and when I got to her, the doorman asked me if I was her ride, John. I told him yes, showed my ID for proof, and what he said next was of some concern. He kind of pulls me in and says, Hey, I was supposed to leave when we closed, but I have a strong feeling your friend's been roofied. She's been on the porch drinking all night, and some guy kept hovering around her. I assumed it was a boyfriend or whatever, but she never turned to talk to the guy. She was either drinking or chatting with other girls around her. Well, anyways, she chugged her last drink, came up to me and told me you were coming to pick her up. Then she asked if she could sit beside me. She told me she felt very dizzy and sick. I told her, sure, hoping she just drank too much, and she passed out right after she sat down. After that, I couldn't see that guy anymore, but I didn't want to take any chances. So, visibly concerned, I thanked the guy profusely. He even helps me carry Claire to my car. Midway to carrying her, She's kind of coming too, like someone just waking up after surgery. That really groggy, not knowing where you are, talking all kinds of nonsense type deal. I don't remember exactly what she was talking about, but I'm sure if I wasn't on high alert about her possibly being drugged, it would have been some funny shit. So we get her buckled in, and I thank the guy again, and he just says he hopes she gets home safe. So now... Hoping my friend is only stupid drunk and not drugged, I start driving to her house. The whole time, I'm trying to keep an eye on her and one eye on the road. She's now snoring asleep, which puts me at ease a bit. But about halfway to her house, my fuel light comes on. Cursing the fuel economy of a sports car, I pull in to the next gas station. It's one of those small gas stations that doesn't have 24-hour store. I'm on extra high alert while I start to pump my gas. The gas station's about a block away from the freeway, and right at the corner of the intersection. The street itself is pretty dark, with lonely lampposts shining very pitiful lights at large intervals. I get that really dead feeling, like this place is just abandoned. To give an idea of positioning, because this is important, the gas station is at the corner of the intersection. The storefront would be facing south, and we were right in front of it where the pumps were. The east would be where the air pumps for tyres and parking spaces were, and the north would be a diesel fuel pump right behind the store, accessible from the street behind the gas station. I drive a Corvette, so the filler is on the rear end of the car, and I'm leaning against the rear looking around. To my left. I hear this weird, metallic scraping sound. I turn and see this guy, about 20 feet away from me, come around the corner, dragging a long metal pipe on the ground. I immediately sense that I'm in a possibly dangerous situation now. 
and the guy looks almost possessed. But he's not looking at me. Rather, he's trying to look into my car. I'm on the defensive, but I hope I can get him to leave, so I call out. Hey, everything alright? Without looking at me, he answers back. You took my girlfriend from me. I'm here to take her back. Now he turns to look at me, and he's got blood in his eyes. Before he begins to take a step though, I start yelling, hoping it'll get him to back off. Like I said, I'm over six foot, and not exactly skinny. I'm not exactly bulky either, but I do have a really deep voice. Back the fuck off. Turn around and leave, and no one has to get hurt. He takes a step towards me, clearly unimpressed. So, almost automatically, I pull my handgun from the inside waistband holster and draw a bead on him. Back the fuck off. You don't have to die. I'm pretty sure my voice cracked because, hey, I'm scared shitless. No amount of self-defense classes and time at the range prepares you emotionally for this kind of situation. B, even though I carry, I'm really against violence, and killing someone is not something I want to do. And C, did I mention I'm fucking scared? Anyway, in a panic, the fucker throws the pipe at me. It whizzes by, thankfully not towards my car, but to my right, and I dive behind my car for cover. I have no idea if he has a gun himself or what, but I was going to put some kind of cover between me and him. By the time I kneel up and aim over the rear of my car, he's booked it. I hear a car door slam and tires screech, and he launches off the curb on the east side of the lot and is tearing down the road, swaying all over the place. In my own panicked hurry, I pull the pump out of the car, screw the cap on, and tear out of there myself. Claire, however, is still passed out in my car, and now I'm afraid, because I'm convinced she's been drugged, and we were followed by that guy. Me, being more concerned about her earlier and keeping my eyes on the road, I mustn't have noticed being followed. The whole way back to her house, I'm wary of any car that's behind me. I'm also driving very aggressively, Reed speeding like a jackass. And when I get to Claire's neighborhood, I circle a separate block that's not hers four times to make sure no one's followed me. When I was satisfied I wasn't being followed anymore, I pulled up to her house and tried to shake her awake. She's doing that groggy, waking up stuff from before, but now she's able to get up. I'm able to walk her to the door, and I get her keys from her bag. Thank God, I think. I was worried I was going to have to call an ambulance if she didn't wake up. I managed to walk her inside, and at this point, she's kind of coming around, asking me what's going on, where she is, etc. I tell her she's home and get her to lie down. She's completely lost looking, and her eyes start to well up. She clings to me and starts sobbing. She's still very out of it but I'm guessing she realizes something bad was going on or attempted on her. I was able to get her to go to sleep. I write a note for her which pretty much said, Hey, I'll be in the next room. We're going to the hospital tomorrow morning to get you checked out. Fast forward to the morning. She's sick as a dog, and after she expelled some demons from her stomach, I drove her to the hospital where she got tested and treated. They did a urine test, and found traces of rehypnol. In the days after, we went back to the bar and let them know what happened. I gave as good a description of the guy as I could. Claire decided against filing a police report, and I respectfully went with her wishes. I still shudder to think what might have happened had I not had my gun with me. I do know martial arts, but that's not something I want to take against a crazy person with a pipe. Claire still doesn't remember much from the night, except calling me and wanting to sit next to the doorman. My advice for you guys listening, either be with friends you trust when you go out, or at least be vigilant if you're by yourself. 
that night could have ended badly in a thousand different ways. But thankfully, even luckily, everyone made it out safe. Number 2 I've always had really intense, vivid dreams ever since I was a kid. At least once every week, I wake up and remember pretty much everything I dreamt during the night. The scenarios in the dreams vary, but there's a few recurring ones. Some pleasant, some less so. But one thing that links a lot of them together is this one character who frequently appears. I have no idea who he is, but I can picture his face in my head as if he were my own brother. He's always been the same age as me. When I was a kid, so was he, and now that I'm 28, he's a grown man in my dreams too. It's unmistakably the same guy every time. Tan skin, shaggy, unkempt hair, piercing eyes. I read somewhere online that your mind can't make up new faces by itself while you're asleep. You have to have actually seen the person in the flesh at some point, maybe just past them in the street. Anyway, two weeks ago, I was out of state at a gas station. While I'm inside, waiting to pay, some guy busts in with a gun in his hand, screaming at the clerk to open up the register, and threatening to blow our fucking heads off. I'm backing away with my hands in full view, terrified out of my mind. The clerk is shakily pulling the cash out for the guy. The robber glances at my face and does a double take. Now, staring at me, the colour almost seems to drain away from his face. I knew what was going through his head. It was the same thing that was going through mine. Recognition and confusion. This was unmistakably him. That guy I'd been dreaming about for years. My partner in crime from my dreams. He brings the gun up and aims it at me. And in that moment, I knew I was fucking finished. I just knew it. He holds the gun there. Then brings it back down to his side. The same shocked expression stuck on his face. He takes what's on the side already and doesn't bother demanding any more. He just quick steps out of there. I have no idea what that was all about, though I've been racking my brain since the incident. How the hell did we both know each other? Did the two of us meet in our past lives? Will we meet again? Is this just some freaky coincidence and I'm reading too much into it? I literally have no idea. I'm just thankful I hadn't been dreaming about the face of my future killer for all those years. The guy was caught on the station's CCTV. They're still out looking for him. Hey guys, Lazy here, and thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure to smash that like button or I'll smash you. I'm just about to head off on a trip to Lisbon, um, but I'll be back in a few days, and uh, hopefully have a new video in a week or so. Until then guys, you all stay spooky. And remember, the best things happen in the dark.